and welcome back. This is still Hello Nigeria. Now, Elia had told you that we will be bringing a wonderful author, speaker, and counselor in the person of Inform Mwa. Mwabu Oko, please, I don't want to make a mistake, mistake with your name. She's actually a wonderful person, and she's here with us in Hello Nigeria. Welcome, Inform. Thank you. Now, please pronounce your surname. It's pronounced Mwabu Oko. Mwabu Oko. I am evil, but I don't know why I was having issues with your name. By the way, you look smashing. Thank you. I love your so hair. You. Thank you. Please, how long did you take you to grow this? Four years old now. Okay. <laughs> I can't even talk about that. <laughs> All right, so Mfon, tell me, who is Mfon Waboko? Okay, Mfon Waboko is an author. Okay. She's also a counselor, um, also a Christian speaker. I have um, a work background in HR as well, so I also do HR consulting. And I'm a mom, I'm a wife Aww. as well. Okay, great. Yes. How long have you been married? 15 years. Okay, that is wonderful. So tell me, um, when it comes to counseling, what part do you major in? Okay, as a counselor, you're basically an all-rounder. But um, I have a particular interest in family and relationships. Why? Because I think if family works, okay. society will work. Okay. Society becomes better if you have happier homes, happier marriages. Children are better, divorce, the divorce okay. rate will go down, and if the okay. divorce rate goes down, then okay. we're going to have, you know, generally better families. Okay. So now, we're actually um, going to be having this discussion on dealing with societal pressures. Now, you just mentioned um, majoring in your um, counselorship career, majoring in relationships and family. Yes. What are some of the most common issues relating to societal pressure? that you have seen in the cases you've treated concerning family or relationships? Okay, before I talk about that though, I'd, I'd like to kind of give, give a bit of a background of what societal pressure really is. Okay. And um, societal pressure is just some kind of influence exerted by somebody or a group of persons on someone else or a group of people to make them do something or to meet, make them meet certain expectations. You know, so sometimes that pressure could be marital, it could be work, and I'd like to say that pressure isn't always bad. You know, sometimes when we talk about societal pressure, the first thing that comes to anyone's mind is it has to be something that is not good. And so I'm trying to say that pressure can also be a good thing. Mm. We need pressure to succeed. Okay. And let me give examples. You know, just imagine if in school, nobody was giving you any kind of pressure to pass your exams mm. or to graduate. Yeah. Then all our students will stop studying. <laughs> Or at work, you had no KPIs to meet. Then productivity will just nose dive. Yeah. You see? And even things like marital pressure, you know, like your, your parents or your family trying to force you, and that's the one we, we meet most of the time in this part of our, um, this, this climb, you know, maybe women, ladies, young ladies being forced to get married because, yeah. they, you know, people say, oh, you're getting older or something. Yeah. Even that, in a sense, is not necessarily always bad. And why do I say that? Because sometimes when you're ready to get married or you're supposed to be ready to get married, and by that I mean you're, you're probably done with school, you're mature, and it hasn't happened, and then you have well-meaning people tell you things like, what's happening, why aren't you getting married, or where's the guy, or, and it's not only just for the women, it could also be happening to the guys as well. Sometimes it helps you check yourself, like do some kind of self-evaluation. So you ask questions of yourself, is there something I'm not doing right. Maybe my attitude needs to be fixed, mm. or, or maybe I need to change my presentation. Am I, you know, pre presenting myself in a way that makes me attract the wrong kind of people? You know, so yeah, those are the kind of issues I've had to deal with. Now, I said societal pressure is not only is not always bad, but it can be bad, and it is bad when it becomes something that is harmful to you as an okay. individual, or makes you do something harmful, makes you make the wrong choices. It makes you kind of lose your value. Okay. So that's when societal pressure becomes really bad. Okay, so when you talk about societal pressure, it, it's an all-round age thing. It's not like it's a group of people, like maybe the young or youthful. It, everybody it, gets pressure. Everybody gets pressure. Teenagers get pressure. Middle-aged you know, middle people also get pressured okay. as well. So pressure is it cuts across all age, all, all kinds of demographics, gender and all. So it's, it's not just the young or the old or the middle age or anything. It's everyone 
There's okay. pressure everywhere. Let's let's break it down still on your major. Mm -hmm. When we look at, um, for example, marital pressure, uh, mm -hmm. marital societal pressure, yeah. for example, what are the most common people complain to you about when they're having counselor session or something? What do they say? What what are the what what are the most co common complaints? Maybe concerning their spouse or the marriage as a whole. Okay, I, I think sometimes it's a, it's the expectation to stay married unhappily. You know, like um, not trying, not 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 getting help when they need it to fix a bad marriage, for instance. Mm. And I'm not advocating divorce or anything. I'm just saying that sometimes society makes you. Not, not own up to what is really happening so you can fix it. I think the first step to solving any problem is even identifying that you have a problem. But for some, for some people, you're not even, pressure doesn't even allow you to talk. So you're not even bold enough to come out and say, I'm, I'm having some issues at home and I need help. Okay. So you're quiet. And then sometimes that tends to sometimes domestic violence as well. So you're, 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 you're taught to shut up. Oh, so wow. you, 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 you cover your black eye with makeup and oh. come out and pretend all is fine when that isn't what really what's happening at home. So pressure can actually make people keep quiet and just die silently. Okay, so, so I mean that. still, but you know, taking it from domestic violence, um, we're having awareness concerning it. Yeah. People are talking about it more. People are, you know, shaming those who are actually, you know, um, still practicing it on their women. And now, in your opinion, has that awareness caused a reduction in the percentage it used to be? Well. Any kind of awareness would definitely tend to do that. But because we don't have statistics to prove that, I can't say that it has. Okay. So, but awareness is good because it means more people are talking about it. And so the more people are talking about it and people are getting more aware, then the chances of the victims knowing their rights and knowing that, okay, look, I'm not alone and I can get help, that kind of helps it. Okay. Bottom line is you want those who are being abused to get out of that situation, you know, for the abuse to stop. And one step for that to happen is when people talk more about it, so you, you feel, you don't feel, you know, you begin to feel, okay, I'm not alone. There's no need to be ashamed. I can, I can talk to someone. I can reach out and get some kind of help. So, yeah. In your opinion, still on family, is it just the women in the marriage that gets abused? Oh, no. Domestic viol violence is, is, is not gender biased. Okay. Who else? Oh, it could be, it could be children. It could even be the men. Okay. Okay. And remember that domestic violence is not just what we, we normally think it is, which is someone is slapping you around or something. Sometimes it's emotional. Mm. You, you get. And so it could be the woman emotionally abusing her husband. Sometimes it's about it's financial abuse. Remember, violence of any kind or abuse is about control. And there's so many ways people try to control others. So men actually get emotionally and verbally abused too? Of course. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. We're still going to be on this. Uh, we're going to be opening the phone line so you can actually call in and contribute you know, on our talk today. And the phone lines will be shown on the screen. We want you to call in, you know, make your own contributions and your commentaries and ask questions. Ask our guests, our counsellor here, questions of interest. So now still, you know, dealing on this. Um, when people look at pressure, societal pressure, for example, um, let's look at finance. Now, some marriages, uh, people have complained. Men are saying they can't get married these days or, you know, cope with the trends of the trips abroad or the vacations, because everybody's doing it. Some of them are getting into debt, trying to put up a face for it. Is it necessary or want to engage in that or actually give attention to societal pressure when it's heated that way? Okay. Um, the best way to, I, I can think of answering that question is to refer to the Bible. Okay. Now, in Romans 12 and verse 2, it says, and I'm going to paraphrase that just so I can explain my point. It's fine. So it says, be not conformed to this world. And conformity there talks about, you know, being forced into a mold. But says rather, you know, so instead of being conformed to the world, being forced into a mold you're not supposed to be in, mm. you should be transformed. And transformation talks about an improvement. It talks about change in the right direction. So it says, be transformed. And how? By renewing your mind. Yeah. Why? So that you would know what is the good, what's the acceptable, and what's the perfect will of God. So what's the, res what's the right response to pressure? Whatever the pressure, and remember I've said pressure is not always bad. You need some kind of pressure to be better. Now, but when pressure is detorting your life and trying to force you, make mm. you conform to something that is out of God's will for your life, then you need to resist. You need to know, 
that's not, I'm not going to let that happen. So for mm -hmm. instance, you're not going to get married to somebody just because society, and when I mean society, I'm talking about your peers, your parents, mm -hmm. or whoever, are forcing you and making you marry that person. Yeah. You're not going to choose to pursue a career, for instance, that you have no interest in just because you, you have societal pressure. So the res right response to pre um, pressure, whether it's in your family or work-related or financially re related, is do not conform out of God's will. Mm. So the important thing is spend some time and find out what God wants for your life. Mm. You know, so is it really important that you're traveling around the world just so that you can keep up with the Joneses or the Kardashians or whoever, or the, <laughs> the Banjos or something? Mm -hmm. No. You know, so find out what God's will is, and you can find that in the Bible about how you should be mm. a, a single person, how you should be a wife, a husband, a child, a society person, whatever, a citizen, and stay in his will. Then pressure becomes a good thing. Okay, so in your years of uh, being a counselor and handling cases, what case have you had that really took a lot for you to handle? Well, before you talk about that, we have Rachel on the line. Hello, Rachel. Hi. Hi, welcome to Hello Nigeria. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Hi, good evening. Okay, yeah, we're talking about dealing with societal pressure. So, uh, what's your contribution or your question? Yes, I think it's just an African thing. Well, I think it's just an African thing, you know, and most of the women, they force their men to do what they are not supposed to do because they want to copy their friends and so which results in lots of pressure in the home because some men are not capable of what the women want their husband to do in order to please their friends or to fit in into the society. And mm -hmm. a lot of things happen in this process which they are not even supposed to or able to say out, okay? Like this domestic violence and everything. Most of the time, it's not when a man beats a woman. Most of the time, it's emotional tra um, pressure or emotional abuse. Okay? okay? Yeah. Yeah. So most of these things, by the time you chop your woman down, it's an abuse on its own. It's not until you beat her or you fight her. There is financial abuse, which the guest earlier mentioned, okay? Okay. So I think with this, if the government can just try, Nigerian government especially, because all this abuse um, actually happened in Africa because most of African men are so domineering, you know, and nobody is going to abuse them. A lot of women are going through a lot because nobody is encouraging you to live or to talk about the abuse, mm. okay? So here the government can just look into the plight of women. Okay. Okay? Yes. Then if we can have metropolitan police around the neighborhood, if they shout or fight around, they can actually call the appropriate authority on time before it leads to another thing. All Thank right. you. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you for your contribution. And it was wonderful. Um, well, we can't take any more calls, but I'm still going to go back to that question. I want you to tell me about the most, you know, extensive, almost touching case you've ever had to treat. A summary, quick one. Okay, it would be about someone who was married and her husband married someone else. And because she felt she didn't have the means to, to support herself, she put herself in a um, situation where she was constantly, you know, emotionally abused. Mm. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, I know that you're an author, yes, and you actually authored the book, Marriage Recipe, a guidebook for wives, biblical principles to a better marriage. How has it been? It's, it's been beautiful. The journey of it yeah. in itself has been really beautiful. Okay. Um, I started writing, writing that book in response to, you know, my need to answer the question. I, I, I get asked a lot, how come you're happy in your marriage? Um, sometimes we seem to find lots of other people who are not that happy. And I felt, okay, oh, I, I used to just give advice, just, oh, this is what I do, or this is, you know, what I don't do. And then I sat down and asked myself, really, so what really are you doing to make it work? Mm. And that was the, the start of that journey. So I, the, the book started out with me wanting to share my, you know, what I'd learned mm. over this past 15 years. And I got all my answers from the Bible. So it was 
through the Bible, applying those principles to my life and, it, and making it work. But then, you know, down, as I started writing, I found out that was not just it. You know, it's, it's one thing to say, oh, I want to tell people how I, made, how I did mine. But bottom line, so, so what? So what? And so mm -hmm. for me, the so what was, when I look around, I really think that if we make, if we can help our marriages actually work, then everything around us, at least most of it, some of the problems we have in society would actually, get, would actually stop. Okay. Okay, if I'm happy at home, I'll come to work and I'll be a happier person. Okay. So I'll probably treat my colleagues better. But if I'm stressed out at home, really miserable, bitter, frustrated, I'll come transfer the aggression at work. How long did it take to write this book? It took me about, an, about a year. About a year. Yeah. All right. And where can people get it if they want to? Okay, you can get it online on Conga, on Jumia. You can okay. get it on Amazon. You can also get it on Barnes & Noble as well. All right, good. And I hope it's not just for the married women. No, it's for everyone who wants to get married and make, and make it work. And then right. anyone who wants to improve Thank you so marriage. much. Thank you. Mfon, Mwaboko. Yes, I got it right, finally. Thank you. So how can people follow you, actually? Okay, you can follow me on Twitter. Okay. At M, and then my son name, which is spelled N-W-A-B-U-O-K-U. Okay. And you can, I'm also on Facebook. My name, Mfon Mwaboko. And you can also send an email to marriage as God intended, all one word, okay. at yahoo.com. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you and so much for having me. And that was actually here with us in Helena, Nigeria. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.